I suppose we can try a different image here. So I do actually have the sample PDF. Oh. So DeepSeek has released an OCR model, which I suppose to put it simply can be thought of as a model that is capable of looking at images of text and extracting the text in a way that it can then go ahead and be used for other purposes. These models fit best into pipelines and an example of really a proper use case for a model like this would be if you have a bunch of invoices, whether they be images or even the first page of a PDF, and you could essentially have this model go through it and then extract all of the relevant data from from those invoices and then format them in a way where they could be placed into some other data pipeline that exists within your system. So these models are really good at looking at pictures and extracting text and other features. Now this model specifically really does not have a lot of information in the Hugging Face model card and I find that that is often the case sometimes with some of these DeepSeek releases is it's almost as if they just let the model do the talking. Um, no pun intended there. But with that, there is also a GitHub and they did also release a research paper here. But really, again, the GitHub is somewhat light as well. There are a few different examples here. In addition to that, they have some examples of different styles of prompts, which can give some insight into how to actually properly test this model. But beyond that, we're basically going to go ahead and just kind of jump into playing with it after we mention a few specific and interesting things. And in addition to that, first and foremost, I want to talk about about resource requirements to actually run this. So I'm currently running this on a 5090 laptop GPU and it is loaded in using around 16 gigabytes of video RAM. So I would say you're probably going to want a 24 gigabyte card to actually run this model, at least without trying any fun ways to make it a little smaller or easier to run. So with that, let's just take a quick look at some of the interesting technical things of this and then we'll just go ahead and actually play with it. There is also a research paper that was released with this model, and while we're not going to verbosely go through this, I do just want to make it a mention that I think some of the interesting things that may have come from this model, aside from just DeepSeek releasing an OCR model, is when they talk about the compression section right here, where they say they talk about experiments showing when the number of text tokens is within 10 times that of vision tokens, the model can achieve a OCR precision of 97%, even at a much larger compression ratio of 20x, the OCR is still at around 60% in terms of accuracy. So this is just a way to kind of demonstrate that there is apparently some meat in here that would reference the ability to shrink things down into smaller, more manageable sizes while still maintaining some level of accuracy. And they do go ahead and talk about how this could show promise for historical research areas of such as historical long context compression and memory forgetting mechanisms in LLM because you're basically taking an input image or something like that. You're compressing it a significant amount and as we can see right here, the OCR precision maintains relatively high amount considering how much you're shrinking that information and even at a significantly increased compression ratio right here the accuracy still remains at around 60 percent so that's just cool because it's basically at least from my take on that demonstrating the ability to take bits of information and shrink them down while still maintaining a relative level of performance from the system or model that is actually handling said bits of information, I suppose could be said. The only other thing I want to mention right here that is kind of cool is they talk about this and you may have heard like, oh, there's something called Gundam. So to test model performance under different compression ratios requiring different numbers of vision tokens, we configure it with multiple resolution modes. So you can see right here, this is basically just kind of the same sample image shown in different resolution modes and then they talk about those right here so when we run this test we'll be using this Gundam dynamic resolution mode and again I do just kind of want to mention that because this is kind of by default able to handle different styles of uh, not styles, different sizes and resolutions of input images. So with that, I suppose there is probably a lot of other meat in this paper and things that may be pertinent to those more interested in the research and development side of this. So I do have a little vibe coded web interface here that I basically handed Claude the GitHub information about this model as well as some snippets from the research paper. And I went ahead and just said, hey, make a Gradio web UI for this. Truthfully, uh, I'm basically just going to test this as if it were a vision model. Some of the capabilities here I am honestly not having the best of luck with, like the document to mark down and things like that. When I do run that, it does work, but unfortunately it's 
producing as well a lot of grounding tags and things like that, which are actually valuable. So realistically, this seems like it may have some decent potential to... I almost wonder how this would perform in kind of taking screenshots of a system and then properly annotating or at least giving the dimensions or locations of every UI element and then allowing like Pi Auto GUI or some other thing to navigate the computer. It could be interesting to try this as a kind of agentic driver. Um, again, I don't know how that would work, but basically we see right here when I have the document to markdown settings section, it is properly showing everything from this actual image, but unfortunately the grounding tags are still there and it is perhaps just kind of like a skill issue where I'm not 100% in tune with how specifically to use this, but this is just one of the sample snippets or fake documents that I've given it, which is just a sample bank statement. Obviously, this is not a real bank statement or anything like that. So basically, we're just going to go ahead now and try this with a bunch of different settings or a bunch of different ways. We can see right here that I do have it in the Gundam or dynamic mode. I am going to just basically leave everything there the same. And let's just try plain text extraction. So this should, in theory, go ahead and just pull out all of the specific pieces of text that are listed in this bank statement, which we can see it does right here. And of course, it does a decent job of that. Keep in mind, it's currently using around 17 gigs of video RAM, and because that number is going to maintain relative um, staticness throughout the duration of this video, I will probably just go ahead and full screen this web UI, but let's go ahead and just kind of maybe have some fun with this. So here's an image of a photograph of a very old Macintosh part, and it kind of hard to see just based on the fact that there is some shadows beyond this and the text is actually just like injection molded plastic so the text is the same color as the background more or less so let's go ahead and try the plain text extraction on this and we'll see how well it actually does in pulling this out and that did quite a good job now again i'm treating this more almost like just we're testing a vision language model but I, it's good enough for the tube i suppose uh <laughs> that was probably a weird thing to say so with that let's just go ahead now this is something i'm kind of interested in so we've given it a trading view chart this is just the current bitcoin price over the last x amount of hours and this was just taken like a few minutes ago so I want to go ahead and there's this capability here called chart deep parsing, which was something that seemed kind of interesting and currently it does kind of elude me what the specific, oh wow. Okay, so we just have some extracted content right here. And again, this is partially where I'm having trouble working with some of this vibe coded web UI, of the output of the model, but I did want to go ahead and do some video just demonstrating some of its capabilities and highlighting why I think that like compression thing was pretty cool. So, okay, so that was document to markdown. Let's just go ahead and do plain text extraction. And that should basically give us something like trading view one day, one week, one month. So this should hypothetically go ahead and extract every feature or every text piece that we see right here, including the actual hour timestamps and things of that sort. It is taking a significantly longer time and that's totally fine as long as it does work. So unfortunately, my trading chart, when I selected it with just plain text extraction, it seems to hang. Again, I'm not 100% sure. This is not necessarily perhaps the best method to go about testing this, but I did want to just do something with it because DeepSeek always pulls fat views. Now with that, I suppose we can try a different image here. So I do actually have the sample PDF. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I did download one of the first pages of the PDF from the research paper that went ahead with this. I just need to actually locate it. So here we see the sample page from the research paper. So I'm just going to go ahead here and process image. And obviously the model will take a little bit of time to load back in because our trading chart kind of hung up on it. But again, this model is definitely, I find it's harder to showcase things like this because truthfully, this is a model that would be used in some form of pipeline. So it's almost like trying to demonstrate a computer's LCD without actually having the rest of the computer set up to showcase it. So there's only so much you can do, but we can see right here that, okay, in this, it does have its reference tags and it's even like outputting um, 
spatial information and stuff. And that brings me back to wondering how this would do in actually being able to perform some like Microsoft Omni parser style bounding box drawing and things of that sort. So we can see, okay, so that was document to markdown, which is somewhat interesting. And let's just go ahead and try the chart deep parsing section here now, as there are obviously some charts in here. And I do want to see if it just goes ahead and gives us some level of explanation about the charts and this is where it does so this is very interesting right here and from that right now it's basically just going ahead and it seemingly regurgitated a lot of this but explained some of this but it did also go ahead and at least give us some sample information about what these specific charts are actually showing us by just mentioning the figure one section shows this and things of that sort now I want to try it. This is just a screenshot of NVTOP, which is the graphics card monitoring thing right here. But this is something that obviously has a lot of visual information that can perhaps be somewhat chaotic. But I would like to actually try the plain text extraction with this because I want to see if it actually, because this is all drawing its UI using just like general characters. So that's very interesting. And that's kind of what I was looking to see is where it actually properly did use the same characters that are being used to actually demonstrate these um, graphics card statistics from NVTOP right here. This is kind of cool. And again, I just kind of want to play with this and show some level of its capabilities. But that's an interesting ability to parse this right here. And I do like the way that it did accurately use the same um, characters to reference what we see right here. That is, that's kind of cool. I'm going to use this one more time. Let's try putting this document to markdown. And again, I've probably said it many times at this point in the video, but the um, capabilities right here in this vibe coded app were perhaps not properly tuned. I want to give it this Simpsons meme. So it just says Microsoft Word doc after you move one image, which is obviously kind of funny to anyone who's relatable to that. And I'm going to do document to markdown. Okay, and all it did is kind of properly pull the text out of that. Let's just do, well, plain text extraction would likely just do the same thing. Okay, that is correct. Let's try chart deep parsing. And the cool thing is we're seeing different types of output here, specifically from the game The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. This is good. The staircase to the left, a brown couch and a small table with a lamp on it. Above the couch, there's a framed picture on the wall. To the right of the couch, there's a large brown rectangular object on the wall. That was a fairly decent depiction of this. I've actually used this image to test some other vision models and this did a decent job in actually accurately describing some of the things in the scene, even if again that is a little out of scope. Now I want to just give it an image with absolutely no text whatsoever and we'll do plain text extraction. It should just, okay cool, so it didn't really give us anything. Now I find that sometimes the chart deep parsing actually gives us interesting depictions of the image. So computer monitor with a graphic, okay. That's cool. So this can be used for some reason. And again, I think this vibe coded web app is extremely jank, but it does give us some good reference of its ability to actually just pull visual information from images, even completely disregarding the OCR aspect of this. So that's cool as well, because I did want to test this in more uh, abstract ways, I guess could be said. All right. I think the last thing I'm going to do is just give it this photo of myself. Oh, very good. So that's basically going to conclude a relatively simple first look at the DeepSeek OCR model. Again, this is something that would ideally be implemented into some form of pipeline. So I find it is a little more difficult to test it independently and just kind of trying to showcase its results. Also kind of coupled with the fact that this web UI may be perhaps a little misconfigured, but that would be Claude's fault and not mine, of course. So with that, I did just want to kind of talk about this. And I think the big takeaways of this are the topics they talk about in the paper or just the concept of the compression here while still maintaining some level of accuracy that is quite good is important and interesting to see. Again, my other takeaway would be I find that this could perhaps be very interesting to use with some form of computer automation system because it seems to do a very good job of properly identifying elements, their locations, and other things, which is definitely a valuable piece to have in some form of agentic computer or phone use pipeline to drive. So with that, that is going to conclude today's quick look at DeepSea OCR. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching.